Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Bits of Architecture. So in this episode of the series, we're going to have an introduction to forwarding and bypassing. So forwarding and bypassing uh, was a topic that we brought up uh, in our video on data hazards or hazards in general. And we talked about how, because we now have this pipeline architecture where we have the overlapping execution of multiple instructions, we can sometimes run into the problem where uh, some of these instructions have dependencies. So one instruction might be writing to a register that another instruction wants to read, right? And they have overlapping execution inside of the pipeline. Now, before we get into the basics of how we might implement something like this, let's have a little bit of a refresher on our pipeline architecture. So this is our pipeline RISC-V architecture that implements a subset of the RISC-V instruction set. So we have our five stages starting from uh, our instruction fetch stage, our decode stage, our execute stage, our memory stage, and then our write back stage where we write back into our register file. And separating these different stages, we have these pipeline registers. And the idea behind these pipeline registers is that these pipeline registers hold the information that an instruction needs to you know, coordinate these different components as it moves through um, these pipeline stages, right? So it saves things like the control signals that it needs and any of the values it needs, say things written out of a register or the results, say, of an ALU uh, op, right? So if it's an R type, maybe the result of doing, say, something like an add, that'll get saved to our pipeline register. So it can be used, uh, say, later in the write back stage where we're writing back into a register file. Um, so that's the basics of our pipeline architecture. Now, what exactly about our pipeline architecture leads to these things called data hazards? Well, unlike our single cycle architecture, we have the overlapping uh, execution of instructions, and these instructions can have dependencies. And a fundamental part of this is that one instruction might be uh, wanting to use a value that hasn't been written yet. So um, for example, here, we have this very simple case where uh, our first instruction is say doing an add instruction. So it's adding the contents of X1 and X0 and storing that result into the X2 register. But our next instruction, I2, uh, might be wanting to read the X2 register. So here I2 is just adding X2 and X4 and storing it in X3. And the dependency that we have here is that I2 wants to read X2. But because we have this overlapping execution and because um, our write back stage is the last stage in our pipeline, um, we have this kind of data hazard here that might lead to stalls, right? So I2 can't go through the decode stage and read the contents of the register file because it's relying on this updated value of X2 that hasn't been written into the register file yet. So I2 needs to wait until I1 updates the value of X2 before it can proceed into the execute stage. So that's a problem that we really have here with these data hazards, right? We want to use a value that hasn't been written yet. But we talked about how we can avoid some of these stalls and these pipeline bubbles with this concept of forwarding and bypassing. And it was a pretty simple concept. The idea was that we already have the value you calculated um, or the value that we want to use somewhere in our pipeline. So we actually know the value of x2 after the execute stage. So after we go through the execute stage, we know the value that we want to store into the x2 register. So how about instead of just waiting for that value to be written back to a register file, we also forward it just back to the ALU so I2 can use that value as well. So we'll still need to write the contents of X2, but we can also just forward the value to the next instruction, say, that wants to use it. So we want to use a value before it's written back to the register file. But the tricky part here is how exactly do we implement something like this? So what are the signals that we're going to need, right? What are the inputs we're going to need to say some hardware structure to make this decision? And uh, what other say components are we going to need? So before we get into that, let's take a zoomed in look at part of our pipeline, uh, specifically the part of the pipeline where we would want to implement uh, forwarding or bypassing. So this is a simplified version of our pipeline architecture. We've stripped out some of the noise here, like our control signals. Um, and even things like our, our entire instruction fetch stage and our instruction memory and our immediate generation. So really just looking at the core part of a processor where we would implement something like forwarding. So here we have our fetch stage. We're reading out values from a register file. 
we have our execute stage where we're computing something with our ALU, our memory stage where we're say accessing memory, maybe we're loading a value, and then our write back stage where we're updating our register file here uh, with some value. So we're writing to a register. So what changes would we need to make to this to implement something like forwarding? So let's take a look at a forwarding version of this exact same pipeline. So here it's become a little bit more complex. And instead of values just directly going into our ALU, we're going to have a couple of multiplexers here. So we're going to be selecting between different values here. Now, what values are we going to select between? Well, of course, we're going to select between um, our registers here. So things that we're reading out right now from a register file. But we're also going to select between values that we just calculated from our ALU. So things being forwarded from our execution and MIM pipeline register, right? So that's being fed up into both of these multiplexers. And the other thing that we want to forward here is uh, things coming from the memory and write back stage. So recall, um, you know, we may have dependencies between instructions that are slightly farther apart. And our memory write back stage is just updating our register file here. So we want that value here to be say forwarded directly to our ALU as well, right? That way we don't have to wait for that value that we just wrote to our register file to read it out again and go to our execution stage. We want that value to go directly to our execution stage as well. And then we have um, our forwarding unit down here that's gonna take a whole bunch of inputs and then set these uh, control lines here that will make the decision of which of these values we're going to select between. So let's take a little bit of a zoomed in look at this forwarding unit. So what are the inputs and outputs to this forwarding unit? So of course, for a forwarding unit, we're going to need some inputs from our uh, prior stages of execution. Um, specifically, what, what the forwarding unit needs is it needs RS1 and RS2. So our two source registers, right? We need to know which values that we want to access from a register file. And what we also need is some inputs from our later stages, so from our pipeline registers. So we need to know, say, what register are we writing to in our execution and MIM stage pipeline register, so our register destination there. And we also need to know if we're writing to a register from our memory and write back stage, right? So why do we need this info? Well, we need this info because these register destinations here might be the same as our source registers here, right? So that means that we're writing to a register that a later instruction wants to read from, right? So we need to be able to compare these values and make sure that we're forwarding the most recent content, right? From uh, say, you know, a later pipeline stage um, into, uh, you know, our ALUs, right? Through those multiplexers, right? So, you know, we're going to need both our sources that we're trying to read from and information about what we're writing to inside of the later pipeline stages. Now our output from our forwarding unit is of course going to be the select lines for those multiplexers. So which um, source are we selecting from for RS1 and which source are we selecting from from RS2, right? So, you know, one of our later stages might be writing to RS1, one of our later stages might be writing to RS2, right? So we need to know information like that. So that's some of the information that we're going to need in order to make this decision. Okay. So that's a brief introduction to this concept of uh, forwarding and bypassing and how this pipeline is going to look with a forwarding unit. But there's some more complex details in here that we're going to need to talk about. So what is the actual logic that we need inside of this forwarding unit to make the decision of which value we select from, right? And how do we handle the cases where we have uh, multiple dependencies, right? So let's say uh, we're just accumulating into a single register here. So we're doing say, you know, R1 is equal to R1 plus R2, and then R1 is equal to R1 plus R3, and R1 is equal to R1 plus R4, right? Then we have this case where we're writing to the same register multiple times from multiple different stages. So which value uh, do we take, right, as our, our most recent value that we forward back into our execution stage here? So that's something that we're going to talk about inside of uh, the next video. But that's going to go ahead and do it for, day, for today, the basic introduction to um, uh, forwarding in our pipeline architecture. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.